Hi everyone and welcome to Canvas for Students training. My name is Jenny McGee and I'm an instructional designer in the distance education department here at Camden County College and today I'm going to show you all of the features of Canvas and I'm going to help you learn how to use Canvas in your online hybrid or face-to-face -face class. So let's go ahead and get started. Just a few notes here before we begin with talking specifically about using Canvas. So Canvas does work with most browsers. However, we prefer Firefox or Chrome. And actually, Canvas themselves has said that Chrome is the browser that works the best with their learning management system. So there is a list there of the browsers that are supported by Canvas. However, I do not recommend using Internet Explorer. We have noticed some glitches with that in the way that some of the images or some of the pages load. So I would avoid that. Safari does seem to work well if you are a Mac user. However, it, you always have the option of downloading Chrome onto your Mac product as well and using that browser. So it is important to keep your browser uncluttered, so clean your cache and your temporary internet files periodically. Canvas will run on any device that supports a modern web browser, and you can also download the Canvas app for your mobile device. And now we're going to take a look at Canvas. When you first click on the Canvas icon in the My CCC portal, it's going to take you to your Canvas dashboard. We're going to go through some of the important features that you need to know with your account before we actually click on a course. So you'll notice over here under the Camden County College logo, this is going to be your account button. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll see that this student, Natalie Baker, has a nice picture of herself here. And you can add a picture of yourself as well if you click on this profile link here. If you hover over, yours will just look like kind of a generic head icon, but if you click on that, you can upload a picture that you already have. If you're using a computer with a webcam or your phone, then you could take a picture. Over here, you could edit your profile, which would be you could put a biography of yourself, a little bit of information about you. Again, you don't have to do this, but it might be nice. Uh, as a way to kind of introduce yourself. So now we're going to click on this notifications button here. So in Canvas, you can choose how you would like to be notified and what you want to be notified about and how often. And you do this by selecting your notification preferences. So you'll notice over on the right hand side, you'll see your Camden County College email address. And this is the default way that Canvas will notify you about any of the things that are going on in the course that you have chosen to be notified about. So for example, this first one is due dates, and I think this probably would be a good one to get notified about. So if your instructor changes an assignment due date, then you will be notified if you choose to be. And you'll see here you could choose to be notified right away. You could get a daily summary or a weekly summary or you could choose not to get any notifications at all. And you would change those by clicking on the icon that goes with that notification preference. There are a lot of different ones here. I'll show you in a moment that you can add an additional email address if you want to. So if you want to have these notifications, go to your personal email address. Then you could come in here, turn off all the ones to your Camden County College email address if you wanted to and then have them go to your personal email address so each contact method has its own set of preferences I'll also show you you can add a cell phone number if you'd like where you will get text notifications from Canvas and you've got all the same uh, things that you could choose to be notified about or not with the text texting I probably would be a little bit selective with that you don't want your phone blowing up every time anything happens in Canvas, or maybe you do. I know I probably wouldn't, um, but you do have that option. So I'll show you now if we go to our settings over here, this is where you can add an additional email address if you have a personal email address or another 
the email address where you want you, these notifications to go. And you could also, under other contacts, add a cell phone number if you wanted to get text notifications. This does not mean that your instructor or other students will have access to your cell phone number. They will not. This just means that this is another place that Canvas can send you automatic notifications based on your preferences. Okay, so we're going to move on now, and I'm going to click on the Dashboard button. So again, this is where you went as soon as you logged into your course, this was your, your dashboard. And the first time you come here, you will see a tile for all of the classes that you are enrolled in. Uh, as long as the class is published by your instructor. So you won't see it if the course has not been published yet. Over here on the right hand side, this is your activity stream. So you have links here to all of the current items that are coming up or are due in your courses. And this is going to be for all of your courses. And there will be up to 25 of the most current items here. The nice thing about this is you've got an immediate list of all the stuff that's coming up. And you also can click directly on the link that's associated with that item and it'll take you into that particular course and it'll take you right to that item that you have to work on. Down below you'll see that you've got a recent feedback section as well and what that is is a quick place to get to any grades that you've gotten back or any feedback that you've gotten back from your instructor. So now we'll come down here and we'll click on courses. So the first thing that you're going to notice is the courses that are showing up on your dashboard. So I've got three courses on my dashboard right now. If I click on all courses, I can see also any courses that I have in upcoming enrollments. So if it's summer now and you've already registered for some fall classes, then you will see your upcoming enrollments listed down below. So they're not going to show up on your dashboard because they're not active courses yet, but when that instructor does publish that course, then you can add it to your dashboard. If there was a course that you didn't want to have on your dashboard for some reason, or a course that didn't automatically pop up on your dashboard that you wanted to add, you can do that by clicking on the star. If the star is white, it means that it is not going to show up on your dashboard. So you can see Introduction to Geology disappeared. If I click back on all courses, I can re-add that to my dashboard by clicking on that star again. So you do have some control over what's showing up on your dashboard. And if you're not seeing something in your dashboard but want to make sure that you are enrolled, click all courses and look down at the bottom under uh, future enrollments and you should see the course there. So this groups icon, if your instructor puts you into a group, so let's say for a group project or something like that, then you would get to that group here. And this would be a place where you could have a discussion just with the members of your group and you can work on your projects together here. So any due dates that your instructor has set up are going to automatically populate here in this calendar. And you will have an individual calendar for each of your courses. You can choose to see them all at the same time, or you can choose to see just one course by unchecking the others. You can also get to any of your items that are due by clicking on that item right here. So again, anything that's got a due date, so any quizzes, any discussions or assignments that your, that your instructor has set up is going to show here. You may also have events that your instructor has created that will show up here as well. And you could also add an event yourself if it was something that is associated with your own personal calendar that's not connected with a course. You could add an event. Uh, you could add an event for, for something that is associated with a course just for yourself. So if you wanted to give yourself a reminder to study or something like that, a to-do list, then you could add that as well. So now we'll click on our inbox over here. So our inbox is going to be the internal email system that is connected to Canvas. So one important thing to note about the Canvas inbox 
is that it is directly connected to your Camden County College email. So if your instructor sends a message to you or everybody in a certain course, you will get the message here in your inbox and a copy of it is also going to be sent to your Camden County College mail. So that way you know that you aren't missing anything if you're checking one or the other. The same goes for if you send your instructor an email. So if you were going to send your instructor an email, you could come up here, compose a new message. You would select the course and then you would send it to your instructor and give it a subject and a copy of this email is going to go into your instructor's Canvas inbox as well as going to your instructor's Camden County College inbox. So it's kind of nice, it covers all the bases and whether you or your instructor or your classmates are checking one or the other rather than both, then it's going to go to both places so you definitely will see it. The last thing we're going to look at down here in the lower left hand corner is our help feature. So you've got several options here that you can use if you need help with Canvas. So the first one is that you could chat with Canvas support. So if you click on this, you will have a window that will pop up and you will be able to chat live with a Canvas tech support person. You also have a Canvas support hotline here. So if you have something that's a little more complicated uh, or you don't feel like sitting there and typing, this is always a good option. And this could be anything from you are having a problem with Canvas, Canvas does not seem to be working correctly, or if it's just a question that you're not sure how to do something, this is a good option as well. And both of these options are available 24-7, 365, so there will always be somebody there. So if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're working on an assignment and you're having a problem with it, if you call the college, you're not going to get anybody, but if you call the Canvas support hotline, you definitely will. This Ask Your Instructor a Question button, this just sends an email to your instructor. If you have a question that, you know, it's not something that there's something wrong, um, but you're just curious or you just kind of need a reminder on how to submit an assignment or post to a discussion board, something like that, you can click this Search the Canvas Guides button and you can just do a search and ask, how do I post to a discussion board? board and it will come up with articles and videos that are related to that. This last option here, report a problem, this is more if it's something that's not urgent but you wanted to let them know about the problem. Uh, this takes a little longer but when I've used it, it still only took maybe about an hour to an hour and a half for them to get back to me. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and click back on our dashboard here and we're going to go ahead and click on a course. So I get into my course by clicking on the title of the class. And different instructors may have their courses set up different ways. Many instructors will have it set up so as soon as you click on it, you get to your modules page. And the modules are where all of your course content is going to be located. However, some instructors may choose to have a home page so for example, this page, this course here has a home page instead and there would probably be instructions somewhere that would say click on the modules and to access the work or there might be a link right on that home page for the modules. So generally you want to make sure that you're getting to the modules, that's where most of the content is going to be held unless your instructor has instructed you to do otherwise. So we're going to stick with this course here and we've got our modules. So when I'm looking at my modules here, I've got my course orientation and uh, most online classes especially and, and also face-to-face -face and hybrid classes that, that use Canvas are going to have an, an orientation or an introduction or start here, something like that. And this is going to be have your important information, so maybe your syllabus, a first day handout, a schedule, that kind of general stuff that's important that you need. So when you look at your course here, you're going to see that you've got 
some different types of items here. We're going to go through each of these. Uh, the first one that you're seeing here looks like little discussion bubbles here. This is a discussion topic, so a discussion board that your instructor has set up. They want you to post and respond to a discussion topic that they have created. This here and this one, these look like a page of paper, and that's exactly what this is. This is a page. So this is going to be a source of information for you. So a page may be something that is going to take you to an external website. It could be a video. It could just be text that you need to read. So this is some tips for success that your instructor has set up. And so this is something that you would definitely want to read. This next page is, again, it's kind of an overview of what you're going to need to do in your online class. So I can get back to my, my modules here by clicking on my home button, or if you have a modules button, depending on how your instructor set up the course, you can get back there by clicking the modules button over on the left-hand side. And you'll also see what looks like a rocket. A rocket means that it is a quiz or a test. And there are also going to be a pencil and paper icon, which is going to be an assignment, so something that you're going to need to do for a grade. And a link here, this link icon, just means that it is an external URL. So if I click on that, it's taking me right to a video that's in, it looks like this one is in YouTube, so it's taking me to that. I don't actually have to click out of Canvas, but it's going to show me that external URL within Canvas. So just a couple of tips for success here for succeeding in any online class. So you're going to see when you look at a module, you'll see a lot of content in that module that your instructor has put in there for you. And a lot of times the first few items are going to be informational. So it's not going to be something that you have to turn in, but it's going to be something that you need to read or review. So it's very important that you read all of the informational posts and documents, any articles that your instructor has linked to, external websites, videos. All of those things are important and your instructor has put them there because they are going to be essential in order for you to do well on an upcoming assignment, quiz, discussion post, something that's going to be graded. And I really recommend accessing and viewing all of the items in the order that your instructor has put them. So for example, my instructor here wants me to look first at the week one introduction and the agenda for the week. Then he or she wants me to look at my earth history and external link here, a video. And then they want me to take the quiz. So I'm doing that first. And then after class, I can look at my assignment and I can start working on my paper. So this looks like this would be most likely for a face-to-face -face class or maybe a hybrid class that is meeting at some point during the week but also using Canvas as part of the class. So again, I would want to make sure that I'm doing these things how the instructor has them set up. So since we have our discussion post here, let's go ahead and click on this. So this is a graded discussion and I can get 15 points for doing this. And I want to make sure that I'm reading carefully what my instructor wants me to do. So they're telling me that I could even do a video if I wanted to, but basically I'm needing to introduce myself. And I want to make sure I know exactly what the instructor wants from this. So it says, tell us why you're taking this course. So I want to make sure that I'm including that. So, and then down here I've got another link to join a group for an upcoming field trip. So again, I'm wanting to make sure I'm looking at all the directions here. I'm looking at any rubrics or examples, any links that my instructor has included before I post. So when I'm ready to post, I'm going to come down here and click Reply. And you'll see all throughout Canvas, so you'll see this th same rich content editor is what it's called. When you're looking at your assignments, you'll see this. A different tests depending on whether it's essay or what type of test it is you may see these same tools as well so up on the top row these are our text formatting tools and they look pretty similar to what you will see in Word for example down here are some other tools that also look familiar 
your instructor in this up here said you could do a video introduction if you wanted to and this is how you would do that if your instructor some instructors especially in maybe a foreign language class they do expect you in forum posts to post a video of yourself speaking and so you would do that here click this record slash upload media button and then it's going to ask you if it can use your microphone use your camera I'm not going to let it since I'm already using my microphone to record this video I don't want to it's going to mess up the system if I say yes but you would say yes and then you could record yourself and it will embed it right here in the page so that you have it when you post your reply if you're taking a math class and you're expected to insert a math equation these are your equation tools this is where you would insert a link to a URL if you needed to upload an image you could do that here and if your instructor wanted you for some reason to put a YouTube video in there you could use this tool as well so all of these tools are things that your instructor may have you use but a lot of times it'll just be posting a reply so typing now if your instructor has told you that they want you to attach a file which if it's something like a paper that you're uploading or something longer than a couple of paragraphs chances are they will want you to do attach a file rather than typing it in here you would click this attach button and then it's going to tell you to choose a file and this looks a lot like what it would look like if you were attaching a file to an email if your instructor has not said to attach a file but you're typing more than a couple of sentences or even typing a couple of sentences it's not a bad idea to open a word document type your response in that word document and then just copy it and paste it into here because if you've ever typed an email or typed something on a discussion board or message board and then had something go wrong and you lose even a couple of sentences it's kind of a pain to have to go back and try to remember exactly what you wrote and it's really a pain if it's something that's you know a couple of paragraphs long so that's why I would recommend type it into Word save it and then that way if something does go wrong when you hit post reply your power goes out or something you still have a copy of it and you're not going to have to redo all of that work and I have found that out the hard way some instructors will not allow you to see the posts that other people have put until you have posted yourself so you may or may not see other people's posts here depending on the settings that your instructor has chosen and once you have posted then you can reply to other students as well so just a couple of tips about discussion boards because they are so important especially in an online or a hybrid class where you are not having the opportunity to have discussions face to face with your classmates and your instructor either at all or maybe not as often as you would in a face to face class so you want to make sure that you're really doing well in those discussion posts and you're taking them seriously so that you can get to know your other classmates and you can get to know your instructor and you can learn from each other so just a couple of netiquette considerations here so you do want to remember that even though you're online and it looks different and the format is not the same as a traditional classroom that you still basically are in a classroom so you still want to observe proper classroom behavior and etiquette you want to make sure that you are being polite and respectful to your classmates and instructor so when you are having a discussion depending on the type of class that you're in you may find yourself not agreeing with somebody's viewpoint and that is absolutely fine instructors love it when a good discussion or debate is going on in their discussion board so if you can take an opposite tact or bring up a counterpoint instructors love that however make sure you do it in a respectful way and that means being tolerant of views expressed by others you don't have to agree but you need to disagree respectfully and don't start insulting people or just tell someone that they're wrong use facts use evidence create a persuasive argument 
A discussion post in a classroom is also not the place for slang. You don't want to type in all caps or use some crazy font or type all in purple. You want to make sure that you're using your words, letting your discussion ideas get across just by what you're saying. So you want to make sure that you're using a standard font like Times New Roman and a good size that everyone can read, like a size 12 font for all your communications, unless of course your instructor has told you otherwise. Another important thing here is do your spell check. Canvas will, does have an, a built-in spell check that you will see the red squiggly line underneath a word if it is misspelled. So make sure that you right click on it, see what the suggestion is. Make sure that it's spelled correctly. Also, don't have one long run on sentence. Put your periods in there, commas, make sure your grammar is good. Again, this is taking the place of a discussion that would happen in a classroom, and a lot of times these are graded. You don't want to have an excellent, well-formulated argument and lose points because your instructor wasn't sure quite what you were saying because your spelling wasn't right or because you didn't have any punctuation. Another important thing is keep your comments relevant to the topic. So if your instructor's got a discussion post going that they want you to comment on something, don't start talking about your dog unless that is what the topic was. Uh, make sure that you're keeping it on point. And this is a big one here. So online communication lacks verbal and nonverbal cues. So anytime you're typing online email or if you're on a discussion board or even texts, your words could be misconstrued. You're trying to be funny or sarcastic, but remember these people most likely don't know you and so they don't know that you're trying to be sarcastic. They can't see the little smile on your face or your body language to know, oh, he's kidding. So just make sure that you're not putting things that could be taken the wrong way and offending people. And think before you type is probably, if you do that, if you're being thoughtful and considerate and thinking about it before you hit reply, then this is going to be a, not a problem for you. And then finally, we want to just make sure, again, this is so important in online courses that you're actively participating in these discussions because in an online course, again, you don't get to meet your instructor face-to-face -face, most likely. You're not getting to see the other students and engage in a verbal face-to-face -face conversation with them. This is all done on those discussion boards and even in a hybrid or a face-to-face -face class. This is a great way to be able to get your thoughts out there, to express yourself, and so make sure that you're really fully participating in these discussion boards. Okay, so now we're going to come back here to our course, and this time we are going to look at an assignment. So again, you can tell that it is an assignment by looking at this paper and pencil icon over here. So this assignment one, concept map. So when I click on an assignment, my instructor could have all kinds of resources available for me before I start working on my assignment. So for example, we've got several links here that I would want to make sure that I'm looking at. There's a video that I want to make sure that I watch before I tackle that assignment. And then I want to make sure that I'm looking carefully at my directions here. We've got a definition to concept mapping. This is a, a link that would take me to Wikipedia in case I don't know what a concept map is. Here is a tool that my instructor has linked to that I can use to do my assignment. I'm making sure I'm looking at all of my options here. And then down here, I've got a rubric that my instructor is going to use in order to grade my assignment. So I want to make sure that I'm looking at what I would need to do to get the highest level of points in each of these criteria. So if I come up here when I'm ready, I can click the Submit Assignment button. And I didn't notice anything really change much when I did that, but if I scroll down now, I can see here is where I would submit my assignment. So my instructor has chosen to accept this assignment in one of two formats. So I could either do a file upload or I could submit a website URL. So these are the two options that my instructor has given me. So if I'm doing a file upload, I would choose my file just like I showed you in the discussion post. 
and I could add additional files if I need to. And then when I'm ready, I would click Submit Assignment. If I was using the website URL option, I would click on this tab and I put my URL in here and click Submit Assignment. So here are some tips for success for assignments. And these apply really to any assignments that you have for any course. But especially when you're working on assignments for an online course or even a hybrid, you want to make sure that you don't fall behind in the class. And especially there are some, some semesters of online classes that are only five or seven weeks long. And that's a lot of content that's being condensed into that short period of time. If you fall behind or miss a due date on a on a assignment, even if your instructor agrees to let you make it up or gives you some extended time, you're still going to be trying to scrambling to get that done while you're still working on the work that's due for that week. So it's kind of a snowball effect if you do get behind. So the best policy is to just make sure that you meet those due dates so that you don't fall behind in class. But if you do have issues with an assignment, you have a problem or you have something going on uh, in your life that's really is causing a hardship for you, communicate that with the instructor and the sooner the better. So don't be afraid to ask questions or ask for clarification, but if you wait until after that assignment is due, your instructor may be less sympathetic to your problem or to help you when you should have asked ahead of time so your instructor knows that you were looking ahead and dealing with the problem when you still had plenty of time. And then this last one down here, so this is important. Some people think that when they start taking an online course that it's going to be easier than a face-to-face -face course and that is just not true. So this is still a college level course. It's going to require the same amount of attention, if not more, than what a traditional face-to-face -face course would. These online courses are being taught by the same instructors who teach the face-to-face -face classes at Camden County College, and they're going to expect the same level of work from you as they expect from their face-to-face -face students. So keep that in mind and make sure that you are aware that you are going to be working hard in an online course. Okay, so the last thing that we will be looking at today is going to be exams. So a couple of notes about exams before we actually look at what they look like in Canvas. So taking an exam, of course, is a very critical area. So a lot of times in courses, whether online, hybrid, or face-to-face, -face, the exams are a big portion of where your grade comes from. So you want to make sure that you have the best chance of success. So you don't want to wait until the last minute to take the exam. If you do that, again, you might run into the same issue that you would have with the assignment. If you have a problem, then you're not going to have any room for error to contact your instructor or contact Canvas or whatever you need to do to fix the problem. And again, you want to make sure that your instructor has time to help you and you're not letting them know that there was a problem after the exam due date has passed. So don't wait to the last minute. We recommend starting with a computer that's off, so reboot your computer before you take the exam. This just makes sure that any other programs that were running in the background are closed down so that your computer has plenty of memory to use to dedicate to that exam. You would want to just go straight after you've rebooted your computer to your Chrome browser or Firefox and then log into Canvas. And you wouldn't want to have other things going on while you're working on that exam. So you're not going to want to have Facebook open, have iTunes in the background, or Spotify playing music. Again, all of those things are, th are programs that are taking that memory space in your computer away from Canvas's test taking software. So you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance to take the exam successfully. And then of course once you're done with the exam you can go back to your normal computing. So now we'll go ahead and look at an exam and again I see my little rocket icon here so I know that it is a exam or all of the exams in Canvas are referred to as quizzes. So when I first click on my quiz I see several things up here that I want to make, make sure I take note of. 
So the first is a due date, and generally there will be a due date. This is an example quiz, so it doesn't have one. How many points this is worth? How many questions there are? What my time limit is? So again, this will give me a good idea of how much time I have to spend on each question. You may or may not have a time limit on your quiz. And then how many attempts do I have? I've got four attempts here. Um, and then I can tell here what was my last score. So my instructor can set it up so that Canvas will either keep my highest score, the most recent score, so the last score that I did, or an average of the scores. And so because of this, if you are taking a test where you have the option to take it more than once, if your instructor is going to take the average of the scores especially, I would recommend, even if you start the quiz and you're like, oh, this is really hard, I need to go read my book, I need to go look back at the, the information that my instructor put for me, still take the quiz all the way through, even if you have additional attempts. And there's two reasons for that. The first is, if your instructor is taking the average of your scores, you don't want to click out when you're only on question two. You're going to have a very low uh, score for that that's going to hurt your average of your test scores. The other reason is go ahead through it so that you can see what the questions are. You can make note of the information that your instructor is expecting you to know so that the next time you take the test, you'll have a very good chance of doing a good job. So I'm going to go ahead and click take the quiz again. And your, if it's the first time, it'll just say take the quiz. Up here, it will always tell me how much time I have. So this quiz will be submitted in five minutes. And I notice over here, the time is running already. So it's going to immediately start counting down from whatever time I started with. If it kind of stresses me out to see this time ticking away over here, I can click hide. And then it's going to not show me that. But I do want to make sure that I am keeping track of it so that I'm not shocked when I get a warning message here that says you have a minute left. And that will happen when you're down to a minute. Once the time is up, the test will submit automatically. So anything that you have not completed at that point is going to be marked wrong. So you'll notice over here I've got a list of my questions. And so this is a very nice way to, if I have a test, normally your tests will have more than four questions. So if I want to quickly get from question 1 to question 40, I could just click on the link for that last question and it'll take me right there. So it's a quick way, especially if something's timed and I don't want to waste time scrolling around if I don't need to, I can click right there on that link and it's going to take me right to that question. So there's several types of questions here. So if I look at this first question, this is a multiple choice question. So when was the War of 1812 declared? I can tell from these little circle radio buttons that this is a multiple choice question in which I can only choose one answer. So I'm pretty sure the War of 1812 was declared in 1812. Could be a trick question, but I don't think so. If I did want to change my answer, I would need to click on the other answer, and you'll notice I can only click one, so the other one unchecks when I click. If this was a question that I wasn't sure about and I wanted to maybe come back and double check again before I actually submit my exam, I can click this little bookmark icon here and that's a sign to me that I need to come back and check it. And you'll notice over here in my question list, two things have happened. The first thing is this little question mark has turned into a check and that's because I have answered the question one. The other thing is I see this little bookmark icon here. So this is a sign to me before I submit my test I can just look back at my question list rather than having to scroll through every question and I can quickly see which questions I have not answered or which ones I have bookmarks next to and I can click on it and it will take me right there. So I'm going to scroll down now. This is question two. This is true and false. So the ocean appears to be blue to most humans. Again, true and false is only going to have one answer here, so I'll check that. Question three, this square 
box here lets me know that I can select as many of the answers there that I think are correct. So what would make a good name for a dolphin? Hmm. Well, I'm going to say um, I like Fli Flipper and Fluffy for my dolphin name. Um, I like irony, so I'm going to pick that. So now I can come down to question four, and this is matching. So for this first one, I've got to decide what type of skeleton each of these ocean animals has. And I am definitely not a marine biologist, so I am just going to kind of guess here and say I think a crab has an exoskeleton. I think a shark has a cartilaginous skeleton. I know sharks have car cartilage. Uh, a fish, I'm going to say, has an endoskeleton. And a jellyfish, I did not even know had a skeleton, but I'm going to pick uh, this uh, hydrostatic because I've never heard of that in my life. And um, that just seems to fit since I didn't realize that there even were jellyfish that had skeletons. So now I can come back up here. I can see I've got 42 seconds. And again, once I get down to that um, zero second mark, it's going to submit the test for me. But I'm ready, so I'm going to go ahead and submit my quiz. And it's going to show me what I got right. So it looks like here, uh-oh, apparently Fluffy is not an appropriate name for a dolphin. So I should have picked Yaddle the Bottlenose Dolphin, and it's showing me this right here. And I did get this last one. Correct. And full disclosure, the first time I took this test, I did not get all of those correct. So if I look here, again, I've got my answer key. Now, not all instructors are going to choose to show you what you got right and wrong the f when you submit the test. Some may choose to wait until after everyone in the class has taken the test and then allow you to see your answers. And some may not choose to ever show what the correct answers were, but will just show what your score was. Uh, but generally, you will get a score, so you will see how well you did on the auto-graded portion of the test as soon as you submit it. Okay, so there are a couple of other things here that I'm just going to go over really quickly. And these are things that aren't something that you need to do, but just so that you know where they are. So announcements. Announcements are going to actually pop up. You'll see that this uh, announcement is here at the top of the home page. And if I needed to look back at any announcements that went further back that my instructor had sent out. I could always click here and it'll show me all the announcements for the course. My syllabus button here. So your instructor may or may not choose to put a copy of their actual syllabus here. Some instructors like to put their syllabus in the modules in maybe the first module. So for the orientation they might have that there. But they could also add it here. If I look over here, I can see my assignment group weights. So if my instructor uses weights for grading, so for example, quizzes and exams are worth 30%, labs and assignments 25%, and so on, I can look here and see what the breakdown is. Some instructors just use straight points, in which case this wouldn't be here. And then the other thing, if I scroll down below the actual text syllabus, this is an interactive course summary. So these are all items that I can know are going to be coming up that are due. And you're only going to see the ones that your instructor has actually published. And I can actually get to those items by clicking on them. And again, these are interactive. So if a due date does change at some point, your instructor has to modify a due date, that will reflect here as well. If you do click on your grades, you will see your own grade book. Again, you've got the breakdown here. And I can look at all of my grades. If I have missing assignments, I can see what is missing. And I can also see any grades that I've gotten. I can see anything that's upcoming. And this is another place I can click to get to my assignment. Now, again, this is a fake student, so this is not anything here, but I will um, be able to see what my current grade is. Conferences are something that may or may not be used by any individual instructor, but if your instructor chooses to have, say, open office hours for an online class or a hybrid class, or they could even do it for a face-to-face -face class as well, they might say, I will be online in the conference from 
4 to 6 p.m. on Mondays. And if you want to drop in and have a question, feel free to do so. And they will have come in here and they will have set up the conference so that you can go in and it's almost kind of like a chat room. So this would be what we call a synchronous chat, meaning that they're in there at the same time that you are. They might have a presentation that they've put up, you may be able to see them or hear them, or it could just be a chat kind of thing. Uh, again, this is something that your instructor would have let you know ahead of time and said, hey, this is going to be going on. And to get to it, you would click on this conferences tab and there would be a button here that says join conference. And you would be able to get to the conference by clicking there. Okay, so that is our general overview of Canvas. And just a couple of other things before we end here. So if you do need help with any of the following things, student email, web advisor or Canvas password assistance, you will need to contact the Camden County College Help Desk. If you contact Canvas directly, they can't help you with any of these items. These are all things that have to be done by the Help Desk here at the college. So again, if you're unable to log in for some reason and you need help with your Canvas password, Canvas themselves can't help you with that. They don't have access to your passwords. So you will need to call the help desk at 856-374-4900 for help with that, as well as if you have a student email issue, something is wrong or you need that password reset, or if you have trouble getting into WebAdvisor. The help desk can help you with any of those things. So I would make note of that phone number. That phone number and their email address is also available at the Camden County College webpage. Again, we did go over tech support, but you can, for any other things that you have that are a problem or question about Canvas that are not related to your password, you can call them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And you can always get that phone number or access the chat by clicking on that little question mark in the lower left hand corner of your screen. That is your help icon. And then if you have problems with certain things, you will need to contact your instructor. So if your instructor is using third party software, so something like an external site like Alex or My Math Lab or something like that, or if they're using something that is supplied by a publisher that goes with a textbook, you need to contact your instructor if you have a problem with that. Canvas really can't help you with that, and neither can the distance education department or the help desk because that is outside our jurisdiction. If you have a question or an issue, with the course content or a due date, something like that. Again, no one really can help you with that except for your instructor, so you would need to contact them. And if you have a problem with a test, the Help Desk and Distance Education and Canvas are not authorized to make any changes to a test due date. We cannot reset a test for you. We can't give you extra time. Anything like that, you're going to need to talk to your instructor. So I'd like to thank you very much for joining me today for this instructional video. I hope that you feel comfortable now with using Canvas. Again, if you've got questions about using Canvas, feel free to use that hotline number and give Canvas a call directly. They are the experts on their product. The distance education staff at the college is myself, Jenny McGee, and Rose DiNardo is the assistant director. And that is our contact information there. So we wish you the best of success with all of your online, hybrid, or face-to-face -face classes. And the best of luck with all of your academic endeavors.